So in today's video, I'd like to talk to you about trust. Welcome back to this video in this little series I am doing. I'm Karen McMullen. I am a channel. I'm laughing because I'm about to say the word channel about a million times. On my YouTube channel, I share uh, videos with my channel messages as well as human design, all to help you really get clear on who you are and what you're here for. If you have been following my work for a while, you may have seen the video I did about how I became a channel. And in that video, as well as in my book, Alchemy of Consciousness, I share kind of the progression of how channeling happened for me. And at the beginning, it was just receiving some intuitive messages here and there in very, very short instructions, like go to the beach waking up in the middle of the night and hearing the voice say, go to the beach. And then kind of getting a visual of where to go on the beach. And, and then at 4 a.m., literally going to the beach <laughs> um, and seeing this most incredible light show of bioluminescence in the waves. And I had this beautiful experience of dancing on the beach in the night with the waves lit up um, with all these little sea creatures uh, called bioluminescence. It was such a magical experience. And another example was the voice told me, cut your hair off. And so I had hair just a little bit longer than this. It was so sun-kissed, it was very beautiful. And I went and I just cut it all off um, because I was practicing devotion and surrender. So um, I was learning to trust this voice. Because I trusted the voice, the voice spoke to me more. And eventually I started receiving longer and longer messages, uh, such as this book, Alchemy of Consciousness. This was a kind of a miracle where I was just meditating one day and I started to hear a voice dictating text and I wrote it down. And this happened um, over the course of months that there was an entire book's worth of messages that came through. Now, at first I wasn't sure if any of this was even making sense, if it had any value, um, but I found that the source of the information felt good and that when I was listening to it, it was steering me in a good direction. So. I would never suggest that you just blindly follow the voice that speaks in your head. Um, actually, I had someone write to me that they were concerned that the voice speaking in their head might not be leading them in the right direction because they had also heard that many criminals have had a voice speaking in their head that's guided them to like say kill someone or do something harmful. I think that's a very legitimate concern and this is also why people are afraid that if they channel they'll become kind of crazy. Um, you're listening to voices in your head, like are you uh, mentally ill? So the question to me is, is what you're being guided or what you're receiving actually serving you in a positive way? If it is, then it might be makes sense for you to actually trust that voice. But if it isn't, it doesn't make sense for you to trust that voice. So the, the trust in the relationship between you as a separate self and this divine voice um, is both ways. You trust the divine, but you also need to know that it is divine and that you're trusting something that's the right source. So another way of saying this is just that the reason why I trust my own inner guidance and this voice within me is because I've had a relationship over time that has proven itself to be trustworthy. Uh, for example, like, you know, this book, Alchemy of Consciousness, when I first channeled it, I didn't trust the messages implicitly. There, there are quite a few messages in here that, that I was very skeptical about. Um, for example, there's a message in here about the global grand reorganization and the collapse of the current systems that we live by societally. And when I first channeled that message, 
uh, first of all, it scared me. And I, uh, because it scared me, I didn't trust it. And I was skeptical. Plus, it's a message about the future. So it's not about current reality. So why would I trust it necessarily? Because it's kind of predictive. And I have always been skeptical of things that are uh, predictive. Anyway, but over time, um, you know, with COVID and seeing some of the events unfolding, I see the grand, reorganiz grand reorganization happening. So it makes complete sense to me. And, you know, there's other messages in here that also have proven themselves to me to be true over time. So I have more trust now than I did back then. And so I think tr a relationship of trust is something that develops over time because it's proven, but you can't prove something that's unknown. And so in order to prove something, you need to experiment and try things out. For example, like when I cut my hair off, I wouldn't have gotten to know what happens when I listen to that voice and cut my hair off unless I actually cut my hair off. And um, really the thing that I got the most out of that experience was just really having faith and trust. So, oh my gosh, I think like it's kind of confusing to even think about it too much, but I think trust is, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, but it's also something that needs to prove itself trustworthy. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. And I, I'm going to be going more into depth in this in an upcoming free masterclass called Transmission, the Mechanics of Divine Communication. I am so excited about this. It's gonna be taking place in my free Facebook group called The Grid Network for Light Leaders. And I can't wait to actually interact with you and have a real time conversation about this topic and to get you know your, your input and your feedback and your questions to make the whole thing come alive. And you can register now by going to the link. I'll put it in the description box. It's on my website and I can't wait to see you there if you feel called to be there and I will see you again in the next video about how to channel. Okay, take care.